Howdy, and thanks for tuning in to Dakota Cowboy here on Beck TV, presented by Dakota Community Bank and Trust. I'm Wild Bill, the media director here at the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame in historic Medora. And along with Tisa Peak of Dakota Horse Magazine, we bring you each and every episode of Dakota Cowboy here on Beck TV. This is our 55th episode, 55 episodes. What a learning experience it has been, what fun we have had, and what response we've been getting from you, the viewer. Thank you very much for that. We're gonna take a little break here after today's episode, but we're coming back bigger and better than ever at the end of August with more great stories across this great land that we live in from Tisa and myself. Meanwhile, we sure hope that you're enjoying North Dakota Rodeo Association action here on Beck TV. Next up, August 4th and 5th, we will be in New Salem, and later in August, we'll be in Medora. And uh, we've got NDRA action all the way up to the state finals coming up in September in Watford City. Well, what a great program we've got for you today. Tisa Peak went to a branding south of Fort Yates. She was at the Flying Old Ranch and she visits with their ranch foreman, Derek Lerke, and a few other folks about what they're doing down there. And let me tell you, it's all cowboy. Can't wait for you to see Tisa's interview with those folks and uh, see some good looking cattle and good looking country too. Green grass, it was raining. It's going to be a wonderful segment. Check it out coming up on Dakota Cowboy. I was the master of ceremonies for the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame Hall of Honorees induction ceremony, June 17th, and I delivered a message that day that you need to hear. I'm very proud of that message, and uh, we're going to share that with you coming up here in just a few minutes. Our North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame Hall of Honoree inductee of the week this week is an announcer with a golden voice, Cy Talon, inducted in the year 2000. He'll be coming up on Dakota Cowboy. And our Dakota Cowboy Student Rodeo Athlete of the Week this week is a hard-working all-around cowgirl by the name of Sheridan Booble. You're going to enjoy today's show. We're having a lot of fun putting it together for you. And why don't you call up the neighbors and tell them that Dakota Cowboy started about two and a half minutes ago here on Beck TV, presented by Dakota Community Bank and Trust. Man has worked in sync with Mother Nature since the beginning of time. Relying on her to provide sufficient moisture every growing season is a roll of the dice. You can now insure your pastures and rangelands with rainfall index policy available from Chamley Financial. This will give you the peace of mind by knowing you will be protected from the adverse effects of Mother Nature. Contact Chamley Financial today, 719-338-3428 or go to Chamley Financial Stop out to our facility, Highway 22 South, let us build a truck for you. Unique gifts and assortment of beautiful jewelry and much more can be found at Dakota Territory Jewelry and Gifts in Medora. Montana silver necklaces and earrings, Black Hills gold and sterling silver jewelry, many Native American made pieces too, and a selection of art pieces. They carry healthy products made right here in North Dakota and to satisfy your sweet tooth, Fall in love with the best fudge around and the freshest taffy made right in the store. Buy it by the pound in a variety of flavors. Dakota Territory, jewelry and gifts in historic Medora. Wild Bill here for Stephenson Selinger Chiropractic of Dickinson. Recently, I tore my meniscus and after an MRI, doctors gave me three options. Prescription meds, reoccurring injections, or surgery, which wasn't guaranteed to rid me of the pain. Then someone suggested I try soft wave therapy. Stephenson Selinger Chiropractic of Dickinson are skilled in this innovative treatment. After a few treatments, my pain went from an eight down to a one. See if soft wave therapy is right for you. Contact Stephenson Selinger Chiropractic today. Whether you have guns, ammo, vehicles, toys, or collectibles, can sign with Last Chance Auction and we can help put money in your pocket. Give us a call at 334-SOLD or visit lastchancesd.com for upcoming auctions. Hi, Rich from Law Motors. 45 years ago, Dad started selling cars. 35 years ago, I started selling cars. And 15 years ago, Tyler started selling cars. And I'm mom, and I told all of them, just be nice.
JR's Auto Body and Truck Collision has built a reputation as one of the most reputable and reliable body shops in this region. With nearly 30 years in business, customers count on JR's to get it done right the first time. They'll work with your insurance company to smoothen the process. From their 40-foot frame straightening machine, Sickens Paint, and the latest technology in the repair industry, they're the only name you need to know. For auto, semi, RV, and trailer repair, it's JR's Auto Body and Truck Collision. North Dickinson, call 701-483-6778. JR's Auto Body and Truck Collision. Welcome back to Dakota Cowboy, presented by Dakota Community Bank and Trust. This week we've been south of Fort Yates, North Dakota at the Flying O Ranch. It is owned and operated by Wayne Hepper, also known as Biz Hepper. Everything on this ranch is still done a horseback. Whether it's gathering yearlings, doctoring calves, straight on to the branding pen, Everybody's on a horse. We caught up with some of the cowboys earlier this week at a branding. Here's what they had to say. Hey everybody, back at the ranch, Dakota Cowboy here at the Flying O, and I'm with the ranch manager on the North Place. Derek, how many crews do you run around here? So my crew up on the north end of our ranch consists usually consists of me and uh, three other full-time guys. We have two places up there. Um, that we call the north end of the Flying O Ranch. We have kind of a central location um, where we're at today, um, kind of the main ranch. Uh, and there's usually, again, depending on the time of year, anywhere from four full-time people to, you know, those four people plus two, three, even four day hands in the spring and the fall. And it's so busy, spring and fall. Correct. Spring and fall are the busiest times of the year for us. Um, just a lot going on. We can we can get spread pretty thin, so it's nice to have some people, uh, some outside help come in and, and, and kind of help us take on that extra workload for those times mm -hmm. of the year. And um, you've been here about a decade south of Fort Yates, right? Yes, ma'am. Um, yep, I started south of Fort Yates. Um, when I started at the ranch, I worked for, I think, three years on this end, and then uh, it was an opportunity to move to the north end. Um, so we did that. It gave me uh, kind of a chance to um, move up the ladder a little bit here at the place. Um, it's closer to Bismarck Mandan, which my wife loves. It saves us saves us about an hour round trip when, when we want to go up and there. And his so. wife's the infamous cook around here, so she's got to get to Sam's Club to get all our food. Right, yeah. That's yep. what I'm waiting for. I can't wait for lunch. Yeah. Anyway, as far as the ranching industry goes, what changes have you saw this past decade? Well, I guess uh, one thing I can, I can speak to a little bit for this place in particular. Um, when I started here at Flying O Ranch, we were just strictly a commercial cow-calf outfit. We, we calved in the spring, we uh, kicked pears out on summer range, we brought them in in, you know, end of September, early October, we gathered everything up, weaned the calves, put them on a truck and sent them to the feedlot. Um, for the past, I think, oh, five years at least, maybe six, we've We've turned this operation into, uh, we still uh, calve all our cows in the spring and, and raise pears all summer, but we background all of the calves ourselves now. Um, and um, it was a little, there was a little bit of a learning curve to that and, and a partnership with uh, Wolf Cattle, who we had been selling our calves to. Um, uh, we learned how, you know, how that would work for us um, in the setup that we have, and it's turned into uh, a really good deal, a really profitable way of, of uh, taking our product and um, putting up the feed to feed them that first winter, and then kicking them out on grass the following summer. Um, I believe we keep all our calves, and Wayne would be able to speak more specifically to this, but I believe we keep all our calves from, for about 15 to 18 months. So the process is just a little bit more business extensive, and he's he's got a partner. Yep, the owner, correct. And yep. you got it down. You take care of the cowboys for the most part. Yeah, I I tend to. My job entails, um, you know, um, talking with Wayne about what needs to happen, um, the different seasons of the year, and kind of the timeline that he wants to do it. Um, and my job up north with my crew, again, of anywhere from two to three other guys is, uh, 
taking care of the cattle, moving them around, keeping them on good feed, water, mineral. Um, we do, you know, we're, we're getting into haying season, so we're responsible for putting up the hay mm -hmm. and keeping all the fences up. And it gets to be a lot. I mean, we've got uh, five different bunches of uh, pears up on my end, three different bunches of yearlings, and uh, we're still branding, and now we're haying. Right. So uh, it, it does get to be a lot. We can get spread thin sometimes, and sometimes the weather dictates what we can and can't do. Yep, and we are gonna we're gonna brand rain or shine I, today. I aren't think we? I think we're gonna make it. Um, we got rained on a little bit, but I think uh, I think we're gonna be all right. What can you say? Have you noticed? You know, the workforce has changed through COVID. When I'm in other industries or talking to other people, has it changed at all? Is a cowboy a hard worker no matter what, or have you saw a difference in the work ethic? No, the people in the 10 years that I've been here, um, we've had a fair amount of turnover. And I don't know if that is uh, because of the type of work, the, the area, you know, the ranch is sort of away from... Yeah, it's remote. It is fairly remote. As are and, a lot uh, of ranches. But I've seen all types. I've, I've seen people uh, come in with great work ethic and they'll do whatever you ask them and uh, they're willing to learn. And, uh, they want the place to be successful. They're team players. Mm -hmm. and team I've, players, I like that. I've seen the other end of the spectrum too. You know, people that think think this is what they want to do and, and they're here for a couple weeks and, and they decide quickly that this is not what they want to do. This is hard work. So, um, you know, we do our best work. We're, we're kind of always looking, um, always trying to make the team of guys, uh, you know, better if possible. Um, Trying to give everybody an opportunity to learn and, and be successful and in turn make the place successful. Mm -hmm. um, so you're promoting future ranchers, future hands. Oh yeah. Yep. Tell me the story on this horse and even this saddle. I haven't seen something this beautiful oh. in a long time. Okay. Yeah. Well this is uh, this horse is chump and um, he turned seven this spring. Uh, my wife and I bought him um, from a performance horse place in Minnesota and uh, with the idea of possibly keeping him a stud, uh, that idea a little more, for us anyway, a little more, uh, uh, a little better in theory than in practice. So we, we decided to geld him. We knew he'd make a nice pretty gelding and uh, he's a lot of fun. He's got a lot of feel. He's a real cowie. And uh, he's made some, some real good progress the last couple of years here for me. I take a lot of time with my horses. Um, you know, I guess compared to probably the average guy, I, I usually take an extra year or two. Um, just I like to ease them into things and really build their confidence and uh, try and make the first impression on whatever we're doing, whether it's roping or sorting or uh, you know working in a tight space in an alley, all that. I want it to be a, a good first experience and, and build his confidence off that. So the saddle uh, I, I just got last year. Uh, it was a five year in the making uh, project. Um, I got it from a saddle maker in southern Saskatchewan named Jordy Regeer. Um, does extremely nice work. Uh, he and I have real similar philosophy on just horses and cowboying and ranching. Um, more of a buckaroo type style. And he's still a working guy, so he only builds a couple saddles a year. And, uh, and I like that too, I think, you know, just the fact that he's still working and, and knows what a rig needs to be to hold up to the daily work that we do. I could tell um, this was well balanced. Yeah. So not to change the subject, but I have two questions left. Yeah. One, what is your favorite season as far as ranching? Is it now branding season? Yeah, probably branding. I, 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 I'd be hard pressed to to pick a you know a better time of the year for us as far as the jobs concerned. You know, I I like uh, when we once we start calving all the way through branding, um, that time of the year is probably my favorite. We're riding every day. Um, I can make a lot of progress on my young horses, um, pull the older horses out for branding and, and really, you know, and try and enjoy that time and progress some young horses in, into and through the branding pen as well. Fall's a great time too. We do a lot of riding, a lot of gathering. Um, you know, each season... And this is rugged country. This, yeah. horse, this country can help make a horse. Oh, absolutely. Yep. It, it, we, we have some, some country that's pretty rough and, uh, you know, the more steps they can make, um, young horses especially the better. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. 
Okay, and my last question. So I know I've, I've helped a little in the day work on the fall and stuff. There's kind of a method to the way you handle cattle, and I've noticed it's a little bit different than other ranchers. I don't know if it's the Temple Grandin style or what, but Biz had explained it to sure. me. Sure. Well, when we're handling cattle out in the open, um, just in general, we, we try and do things as quiet as possible and keep the herd as quiet as possible. Now, my personal uh, take on that is uh, we're in our cattle a lot, horseback. You know, we're in them just about daily in the spring. We check, uh, we check our pairs, you know, one or two times a week uh, all summer. Um, the yearlings were in quite a bit in the summer to doctor, so I mean just in general our, our cattle herds see us a lot And when we feed in the winter a lot of times we're getting out we're unwrapping bales So they see people on foot uh, quite often as well, and I think just all that interaction keeps them You know quieter so when we do go to make a big gather or work them in a, a portable corral or even a you know, at one of the places in the main corrals, um, they just in general handle a little quieter. Um, they've almost been trained that way to be handled and to. That makes um, sense. And once you do something, with, you know, a lot of these cows have been here for a long time. Um, you know, and, and we, we typically kind of do a lot of the same thing every year. We, we do need to be flexible and adjust sometimes, but they get the hang of it. They kind of know what you're asking and, and what you're wanting. And um, the lead cows kind of take over a little bit. Sometimes, yeah, looking looking for open gates or, uh, you know, when you're sorting in a corral, you know, and you're trying to stop, cal hold up calves and let cows by, they, they kind of, they, they know what you're asking of them and um, it usually works out pretty good. I don't think you can, you know, be in them too much. Um, I like that. It's like horses, and that's exactly. what I noticed. And I think these cattle are cared for as are lot most ranches, as much as horses. I mean, when the general public doesn't know how much care really goes into a cow calf operation. I'm a huge believer in, in using horses. Um, I know that some some places, you know, uh, just don't have the time to do it that way. But horses and cattle speak the same language. They they use a lot of the exact same body cues and you know, a horse, a horse and a cow can talk to each other even if the person sitting on the horse isn't understanding the language so I love that um, I, I, love I that. think that is the best way to work around and handle cattle um, and it's sort of a dying thing in the country um, so the places that are doing it like ours and there's there's still a number of them out there but you know not as many as there was 50 or 100 years ago obviously they've switched so. to four wheelers even airplanes it's, and whatever it's time you know and i understand that we've we've all got thing lots of things to do but uh everybody here likes horses uh, just about everybody here likes to rope and uh, so so we try and uh, keep the horses involved in the cattle work absolutely as much as possible that's where it should be okay i wasn't going to ask another question but i have to Fire you're away. a family man yep. you've got a lot of little cowboys growing up yeah what would you do i mean i know you're this is how you want to raise your kids how did you make that commitment and decision because you probably could have had a lot of other jobs that paid more it's uh it's kind of a long story, but I can I can tell it fairly quickly. Um, I actually taught for five years. Um, you thought so? You have a teaching background. I, I, I did. I got a teaching degree, and I taught uh, fifth and sixth grade back in Minnesota, where I'm fr originally from. Um, I did this stuff on the weekends, helping some small ranches over there, and really enjoyed it. Um, did a lot of it in my summers, and. Uh, through connecting with the right people, uh, I was able to get the opportunity to come out here, like I said, t about 10 years ago, and uh, talk my wife into it. And um, we came out here pregnant with our first one, and here we are 10 years later, we've got five boys, nine down to about nine months. And, uh, and we, just, we just love it out here. We love raising the kids kind of away from the hustle and bustle of uh, modern day society and uh, kids enjoy it lots of big open spaces to run and be loud and uh, and they're still running around barefoot or oh yeah boots, barefoot and naked sure. yeah yeah <laughs> well Derek I know we got a lot of work to go do I we took do. you away from your job no that's thank fine. you so much thank you very much I'm here with Luke Henninger um number one cowboy on I, I'm maybe maybe one of the top cowboys on flying <laughs> old ranch anyway Luke 
You came from South Dakota country, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, yes, man, Fort Pier. Just share your story about being cowboy and how you rodeo and how this is your life. So we never really kind of grew up on a ranch. We just kind of had a little 10-acre horse property and had super great parents that just pushed us all the way, gave us the horses we needed to, and we just kind of rode some younger horses, and they worked a bunch back home, and then uh, my brother got sent up here with Biz here a few years back, and then a couple years later I met Biz at her open, and. I come up here and I've been up coming up here ever since. I think this is my fourth year here and started full time for him this fall. And so yeah, it's going pretty good. The rodeo rodeo business we've been in our whole life. Uh, my brother kind of rode bulls throughout high school and I always fought bulls at the house for him and, and I just kind of turned into fighting bulls and I went pretty big doing that for a while and kind of turning gears a little bit, trying to rodeo a little more, trying to go to the rope inside, steer us a little bit more and kind of do this life, kind of go away from the fighting bulls a little bit. A little it's not necessarily safer, but maybe a Just a little bit, just a little bit. Well, he had some Bronx for breakfast, and I, uh, I actually got some video of that. Bet. So you're, not only are you a cowboy in day riding, you also are training horses as you're doing this. Absolutely, job, right? absolutely. So yeah, that's, uh, I kind of try to buy a lot of young horses and twos and three-year-olds, kind of ride them for a year or two and just kind of turn them and sell them and try to make a dollar off it. And and uh, it's kind of what we've always done. and. I still try to do it as much as I can. You know, it's kind of nice having a good string of horses underneath you, but it's also nice having those younger ones to go on and produce and sell and make some money off them. And do you feel like you had to pick a ranch that used horses only? You know, no I, I you're on a four wheeler. No, not really. Um, and that's what I like about this job is, I mean, it's just a, it's a cowboy operation. There's no four wheelers about this job. I mean, it's all horseback, and I mean, we we cover. 30,000 acres and 1,500 headed cows at the place we run and and so it's uh, it's big country and a lot of ride and I mean you leave the house 6 o'clock in the morning you might not get back till 10 o'clock at night and I mean just three or four horses a day and you just use every single one of them and it's a it's an amazing job I love it here. Well that's awesome so that means you like North Dakota. Too. I don't mind it yeah it's, don't mind I it. I mean North Dakota South Dakota not much It's different. not no it's not a lot different at all. What do you think about the, the caliber like if you were to go work another job besides being a cowboy do you think this work ethic that you've instilled your whole life or had instilled in you would carry through? It would you know and it would carry through so we out here I mean we have to bust our butts every day morning till dawn I mean it's crazy but uh, the work ethic is unreal. I mean, you have to, like I said, you have to bust your back to get anything done, it seems like. I mean, whether going around fans, putting out mineral, or just doctoring cattle, I mean, it takes it takes an abundance on somebody. It's all physically hard. Oh, yeah. Mentally challenging at times, oh, and absolutely. The, hour, the hours are long. The hours are long, they are. But you know, you there's there's perks of it. it. Yeah, it's just it. There's perks of it. You know, we, we go rodeo, and I mean, we do that on a quite regular basis and if you love it you love it and if you don't you don't it's just kind of how it is I mean going on the road but it's just something we've always liked and always done and do you think growing up having to make those horses has helped make you the cowboy oh absolutely you absolutely you know we never come from money so it wasn't just one of those deals where you could go buy anything you wanted to and go win on I mean everything I rode was trained myself or people helped me along the way and I mean it just it's helped a lot. I mean, the horsemanship, the everything, and, and it makes a guy really appreciate the value of a good horse, too. I mean, once you ride so many junk ones and then try to go win on a junk horse, and then you finally get a good one in your string that's worth it, and it makes life a lot easier. That's an excellent point. That's why I admire you. You make your own horses. You're out here doing it day in, day out. Not only a champion in the arena, as far as I'm <laughs> concerned, but a champion on this ground, out here in the pasture and in the branding field. Absolutely. Thank you, Luke. Uh, thank you. I'm with one of the best helpers on the ranch, Naomi Brown. Naomi lives in 48th, and you homeschool, right? Yes, I do. Well, you're also a cowgirl. Yes, what's I one, am. What's one of your most favorite jobs in the branding pen? I like to rope. You like to rope? Yes. So are we going to see you rope today? Probably. What's I think I Okay. What's she, what kind of horse did you ride today on the gather? Her name's Annie. She's a three-year-old mare. A three-year-old mare. We had a 12-year-old kid on a three-year-old mare. Yes. You're, you're kind of training her, aren't you? Yes, I am. I have a couple horses that I'm training at this moment. Really? Yes, I have one that I brought that I'll be roping on that I've been training on as well. Okay, besides running around 48s on ranches, what else do you like to do, Naomi? I like to do ballet. I'm in ba I'm a ballerina, so yes. Really? That's incredible. Do you think that helps with your riding and being a cowgirl? For balance, yes, it does. Uh, it helps a lot. Helps a lot, definitely. Yeah. Running around 48s, 
Fort Yates, what other things do you like to do besides being on ranches? I like to um, help my dad fence and stuff. You like fencing? Yes, I do. So what kind of tricks of the trade do you have for that? Have you learned any tricks? No, I do not. I just sit in the truck and watch my dad. That's what do I you do. really? Yes. Perfect. Okay, and as far as the future goes, what do you think you're going to plan on doing? Being an outdoor job or an indoor yeah, job? Yeah, I want to run a ranch when I'm older. In North Dakota? Yeah. Wonderful. Well, there you go, Dakota Cowboy. I'm with Naomi, one of the best cowgirls in the South. Talk to you later. later. And thank you to all the cowboys and helpers for your interviews and your insight. We will be right back with more Dakota Cowboy on Beck TV. Improve your home or business with services from Zocker Remodeling and Construction. Whether you need windows or doors repaired, replaced, or installed for your residential or commercial property, Zocker Remodeling and Construction can help. Our local and family-owned business offers flexible hours and over 10 years of experience in the industry. We are your local Pella expert. Pella is rated number one in highest quality and innovation by homeowners across the country. Feel confident when you choose Pella and Zocker Remodeling. Contact us today for a free estimate. Zocker Remodeling and Construction. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. The dictionary defines community as a group of people living in the same place or sharing common goals. Community is the largest part of our name and we make it the largest part of our business. We support our local schools, organizations, youth programs, and local events from Bowman to Bismarck because we all share a common goal to better the quality of life in our communities. Come bank with us at Dakota Community Bank and Trust, your real community bank. Medora Boot and Western Wear open year-round in historic Medora. You'll find quality items for cowboys and cowgirls of all ages. Medora Boot and Western Wear has over 1,500 pair of boots on hand at all times. New this year, the R. Watson brand of boot featuring an all-leather heel, riveted shank, and a 10-iron leather sole. Jeans, shirts, hats, caps, and more. And customer service is number one. Medora Boot and Western Wear in historic Medora. Medora Boot and Western Wear. Hello and welcome to the MHA Interpretive Center. It's the perfect stop along the Lewis and Clark Trail and the cultural hub of the Mandan, Hidaadza, and Arikara Nation. Nestled along the shores of Lake Sagagawea in Newtown, North Dakota, one mile west of the Four Bears Casino. You can enjoy amphitheater performances, art exhibitions, and educational workshops utilizing our Living Cultural Center. Enjoy some coffee, browse our gift shop, and learn about the original people of this land. Learn more at mhanation.com slash interpretive center. And welcome back to Dakota Cowboy here on Beck TV, presented by Dakota Community Bank and Trust, along with Tisa Peak. I'm your co-host, Wild Bill, the media director at the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame in historic Medora. Had a uh, viewer comment the other day that said, Wild Bill, you are outstanding in your field. Well, Albert, <laughs> this is for you, buddy. Thanks for the feedback. I greatly appreciate it. On June 17th, the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame held the 2023 induction ceremonies at Jaden Terrace in historic Medora. I had the honor and the privilege of being the master of ceremonies for that event, and I was very thrilled to deliver a message, a message of something very important that I learned in uh, researching the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame. Those in attendance heard a great message, at least in my opinion, and now you can hear that message too on today's Dakota Cowboy. We're gonna give thanks right now. We're gonna give thanks to the one who has given us life and given us purpose. 
Well, let's remove cover again and we'll give thanks. <laughs> Our God in heaven, we just thank you. Thank you that you've allowed us to be born here, to be in this state and get surrounded by your creation. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We thank you for each one that's here. We pray for safe travels. We pray for good fellowship. We pray for each of the inductees and their families that we get to honor today for some of these accomplishments. Father, we thank you for watching over us. Thank you for the purpose that you've given us in this life. We ask and pray for your presence here. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. President Staka, Board of Directors, honorees, trustees, members and friends here and online, welcome to the 2023 North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame induction ceremony. I'm Bill Polinek, and for the past seven years, I have been the media director here, and I'm very humbled and very honored to be your master of ceremonies for this afternoon's festivities. I have just a few words and we'll move on to the business at hand here on this beautiful day. I thank President Saka for the beautiful prayer a moment ago. As it leads me to the subject, I'd like to share with you all today, prayer. I'll begin by saying that I won't quote any Bible scriptures. I'm not all that religious, but I am a believer. I do believe in God. I do believe in the power of prayer. For most of us, why we pray, that's personal, and it's never been a question. It's not a question now, but something that I'd like to point out in reference to our organization. In my role here at the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame, I have studied all the induction videos in our archives quite extensively, and I've talked to many, many people that have been involved over the years. And one thing that I found, that in the early days, before we even had a name, North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame, before we were ever an organization, before there were any bylaws, before a method of operation was determined, before Medora was chosen as our home, before the categories were set, before there was even any criteria determined for those categories, the very first decision ever made by the powerful individuals involved in establishing our organization those people decided that each time they get together, the very first decision that they made was to pray. With that in mind, at the very first induction ceremonies held August 1st, 1998, founding board president Phil Baird and founding board member Bob Tiber were standing just off Jaden Terrace right over here, discussing the procedure that was about to commence. Suddenly, their gaze was drawn skyward as they noticed something in the sky and directly overhead, an eagle was circling Jaden Terrace. The sighting of a bald eagle can mean many, many things. Some believe that seeing an eagle flying horizontally, as it was that day, means that you will reach your destination. Native American cultures hold the eagle as sacred as they fly the highest of all creatures making them closest to heaven and the divine creator, and they are responsible for delivering our prayers. Ladies and gentlemen, that was how the very first induction ceremony began for an organization whose first decision was to pray. Later that same day, as the last inductee during that inaugural event was being honored, Mr. Medora Harold Schaefer was at the podium and he was there to accept the honor on behalf of Western novelist Louis L'Amour. Harold began with a bit of his Schaefer-esque humor, and he went on by saying, I have just a few words and we'll be finished here today. He spoke about his experiences with L'Amour, and he said the words, and Louis L'Amour's ancestors, when he said the word ancestors, immediately a long, low rumble of thunder echoed in these badlands and rumbled through Jaden Terrace through the Burning Hills Amphitheater. It was, as, it was that, as if heaven was putting an exclamation point on Mr. Schaefer's words 
right on cue. It was a magical, mystical, heavenly experience to be at the very first major public event ever assembled by a group of individuals who made the decision to begin each gathering with a prayer. I think of this often as I continue researching information on the history of the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame in the great state of North Dakota and what our Hall of Honorees means to many people. And let me say that river runs mighty deep. I say this as I think of Linda Baker. As the end of her life was approaching, one thing Linda requested was to see her father, inductee Philip Baker's photograph, hanging in the Hall of Honorees at the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame, which she was able to do surrounded by her loving family. When the great bucking horse Whizbang was inducted in 2004, the honor was accepted by 1998 inductee Jim Tesher's bride, Loretta. She shared with the crowd in attendance that day when Jim was in the hospital in his final days around Christmas time, 2003, he would ask Loretta to make sure that Whizbang was nominated into the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame and it would prove to be one of his last wishes. Loretta wrapped up her speech that day by saying, Jim's in heaven now, smiling down because he and Whizbang are inducted into the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame in heaven on a horse. These events occurred around an organization who decided to, above all, first and foremost, to pray. Today, the names of the 2023 inductees are going to be said in the same breath as Tesher, Nelson, Germanson, Herman, Sitting Bull, Sakakawea, and Roosevelt. We're in close proximity to what will become the Theodore Roosevelt Presidential Library, and we're not only praying for our children, but we are working hard to ensure that these children have access to the history of North Dakota and its people. The new library, along with our continued hard work and dedication at the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame, will preserve the stories, the artifacts, and arguably the most important thing, the legacies of our people. When NFL quarterback Peyton Manning was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, he concluded his gratitude that day by saying, a legacy is only worthwhile if it has a future to fuel. I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that we have our eye on that horizon and we're full speed ahead with a full tank of fuel. Now, for the sake of their accomplishments and the lives that they led, and for future generations to reflect upon, we present to you the legacies that are the class of 2023 in the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame. As I reflect on the last 54 episodes of Dakota Cowboy, I've developed a deep respect for the stories and messages that Tisa and I try to deliver each week here on the show. And to me, no message has more depth and meaning than the one that you just watched. I stress it's the message, not the messenger that is important. Sure, we like to conduct ourselves in a manner and appearance that will attract viewers to our show. But at the end of the day, it is the message, the legacies of our people that is important. I think of all that I've learned over the past 54 episodes and I can say with 100% accuracy that we are only getting started in telling these stories. I get a deep satisfaction in watching my partner grow and discover her passion to tell these stories about great people. And I look at my past and I have to tell you, it's my mother, Agnes Polinick, who has given me the curiosity and drive to challenge myself each week here on Dakota Cowboy. My mother was a journalist. I attended the very first Medora musical with her July 1st, 1965, as she was invited by Harold Schaefer to come see the biggest spectacle ever in the North Dakota Badlands. And she was a historian who traveled the state of North Dakota, interviewing Ukrainians who immigrated to this country, including my grandparents and great grandparents many, many years ago. I would tag along with her and I've now realized how she taught me the art of the interview beginning when I was six or seven years old and she compiled those interviews into a book titled Ukrainians in North Dakota in their voices. Contact me if you'd like a copy. I can say with a fair amount of accuracy that if it hadn't been for Agnes Polinick's influence, there wouldn't be a Dakota Cowboy. 
It's nice now to look back on her and smile, maybe shed a little tear of happiness. And I know I was raised by the best there ever was. And I can honor her legacy by just being me, your host here on Dakota Cowboy, presented by Dakota Community Bank and Trust. These Flute Trailers of Dickinson is a family-owned dealer with expert staff that know their products front to back. We stock over 150 units of all types and can custom order a trailer with the unique features and capabilities you require for brands you can trust. Our experienced service team is the reason we're also the best place to have your trailer customized or repaired. Count on Base Flute Trailers of Dickinson to keep you hauling. Welcome to the start of Main Street, the main medical building located at 315 Main, downtown Minot. The unique shops inside offer body and mind healing, a safe haven for mothers-to-be, mixed martial arts, hair salons, massages, counseling services, and much more. Also, keep a special lookout for a brand new Jamaican-inspired restaurant opening this fall. Take a stroll inside the main medical building and uncover the unique shops and experiences that lay within. Discover the start of Main Street at the main medical building today. Hi, Rich from Law Motors. 45 years ago, Dad started selling cars. 35 years ago, I started selling cars. And 15 years ago, Tyler started selling cars. And I'm mom, and I told all of them, just be nice. Whether you have guns, ammo, vehicles, toys, or collectibles, can sign with Last Chance Auction, and we can help put money in your pocket. Give us a call at 334-SOLD or visit lastchancesd.com for upcoming auctions. Man has worked in sync with Mother Nature since the beginning of time. Relying on her to provide sufficient moisture every growing season is a roll of the dice. You can now insure your pastures and rangelands with rainfall index policy available from Chamley Financial. This will give you the peace of mind by knowing you will be protected from the adverse effects of Mother Nature. Contact Chamley Financial today, 719-338-3428 or go to Chamley Financial. Com. JR's Auto Body and Truck Collision has built a reputation as one of the most reputable and reliable body shops in this region. With nearly 30 years in business, customers count on JR's to get it done right the first time. They'll work with your insurance company to smoothen the process. From their 40-foot frame straightening machine, sickens paint, and the latest technology in the repair industry, they're the only name you need to know. For auto, semi, RV, and trailer repair, it's JR's Auto Body and Truck Collision. North Dickinson, call 701-483-6778. JR's Auto Body and Truck Collision. For more than 70 years, farmers and ranchers have relied on Dickinson Ready Mix for all their concrete needs. Whether it's a shop building for machinery storage or paved feedlots for your livestock, grain bins for on-site grain storage, or precast pads for automatic cattle waterers, Dickinson Ready Mix has been there. To provide quality concrete for all your agricultural structures and infrastructure. For your next project, call Dickinson Ready Mix to discuss the benefits that concrete can add to your operation. Okay, we're looking for ideas for our next commercial. Thoughts? We have a fully stocked lot. Cars, trucks, SUVs? Clearly. We strive for honesty, transparency, and a better buying experience. Of course we do. Guys, think, everybody's busy. Nobody has time to spend hours shopping for a car. It has to be simple, easy. Sales, service, simplify. Perfect. Torgerson Auto Center, East Bismarck Expressway. Sales, service, simplified. This is Dakota Cowboy, presented by Dakota Community Bank and Trust, and this segment is dedicated to our North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame inductee of the week, brought to you by Torgerson Auto Center on East Bismarck Expressway in Bismarck. Compact cars, sports cars, luxury cars, light and heavy duty trucks, they've got them at Torgerson Auto Center. See them on Facebook, see them at TorgersonAutoCenter.com, or on the lot on East Bismarck Expressway. Our Hall of Honorees inductee of the week is James C. Cy Talon. His influence on the sport of rodeo cannot be underestimated. He was called the golden voice of professional rodeo and millions of people heard his rich voice over the microphone at countless rodeo performances. He was born near Cavalier, North Dakota and was a versatile man. He could have chosen from many careers including bareback riding, lawyer, musician, pilot, rodeo announcer. 
He was inducted in the category of Arts and Entertainment. And Dakota Cowboy now takes you back to August 5th, 2000, as former board member and now fellow inductee, Walter Pill Jr., whom you've seen here on the program recently, gives a bio for Cy Talon and introduces his son, Terry J. Talon, who accepted the honor on that windy day at Jaden Terrace. I feel very privileged to have this opportunity to introduce for induction into the North Dakota Cow Cowboy Hall of Fame, Cy Talon. Now, Elvin Nelson's wife, Kay, said that Cy told her that it is pronounced just like Taylor, but you drop the R and you put an end on it. And so that's good authority for me because uh, even though through the years I saw the name, I never was quite sure how it was pronounced. As a 25-year veteran of rodeo announcing myself, I feel a very personal connection and respect for Cy. Even though I'm not sure that I actually heard him announce a rodeo, uh, I am wanting to think that I did hear him when I was a, a youth at the Match of Champions in Dickinson or another of the major regional rodeos. At least that's the way I want to remember it. A few years back, I read a book titled Rain or Shine, written by Cy's daughter, Syra. I'm sure that that biography was greeted with mixed emotions by other members of his family because it presented Cy as a real person, not just as a rodeo star with lots of glitter. It presented his life with no holds barred. All of us who have rodeoed know either first or second hand the difficult and demanding mistress that the rodeo road can be. In spite of the many pitfalls that rodeo can have, Cy maintained his premier status in rodeo announcing for over 40 years. His style of announcing was to portray the contestants, both man and beast, as athletes. He gave them dignity and saw his task as educating and enlightening the audience about rodeo as a serious professional sport. He did not succumb to the standard of other announcers of his day and even some in this day and age by demeaning the sport with barnyard humor and cornball jokes and excessive distracting patter with the clown. Sai's approach was serious and convincing. He demanded respect for rodeo and he achieved it for himself. For these reasons, his resume still is envied by announcers today. Just a few of his accomplishments. He announced the very first and a total of nine NFR rodeos. He did the Denver National Western 33 times. He did the San Francisco Cow Palace Rodeo 30 years. He was elected Rodeo Man of the Year in 1965. The North Dakota Rough Rider Award was also awarded to him. His impeccable dress earned him top 10 honors as one of the Western Apparel Association's best dressed men in 1970 and 71. The URI retired from announcing in 1979 he was inducted into the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame. To accept the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame Arts and Entertainment Award on behalf of Cy Talon's family is Terry from Augusta, Montana. Figures the wind would blow when we start talking about rodeo announcers, I guess. I can assure you, Walter, that Dad was very real. And why he may not be what was depicted in my sister's book, there's a lot of stories right around here that can be told about him. I know he'd be very proud today to be a part of this celebration with all of his friends and to be inducted into a hall that includes so many of them. I know he was proud to be from North Dakota. I found that out the hard way one time. My brother and I were both born and raised in Montana, and as school children, it's kind of common in Montana to tell North Dakota jokes. I brought one of those home to Dad once when I was about in the fourth grade, and I can honestly say that was the last North Dakota joke I ever told. And I can assure you my younger brother has yet to tell one in his lifetime. 
But I've got a feeling that Dad, were he alive today, would be more pleased with this honor than any of the accolades that he's ever received to be going into the hall with so many of his great and good friends. And I've got a feeling up there in heaven somewhere, there's a bunch of cowboys sitting in a corner and a couple of Schnells and a Father Cassidy and a bunch of other people that are looking down on this gathering today and are mighty pleased with what you're doing here in Medora. Thank you for honoring my father. Our North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame Hall of Honorees inductee of the week this week, Cy Talon, brought to you by Torgus and Auto Center on East Bismarck Expressway in Bismarck. Learn more about Cy Talon and all the inductees in the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame by stopping by and visiting us. We're open Monday through Monday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And you can find out more online at NorthDakotaCowboy.org. And be sure to give our Facebook page a like as we update that continuously. At the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame, we honor the champions of the past and we support the champions in our future. Meet Sheridan Booble. This week's Dakota Cowboys Student Rodeo Athlete of the Week is an all-around cowgirl from Center, North Dakota. Sheridan Booble is the daughter of J.D. and Sarah Booble and will be a junior this fall at Center Stanton High School. She's busy in the arena, competing in breakaway, goat tying, barrel racing, and pole bending. She's the 2023 North Dakota State High School Breakaway Roping Champion and will be competing in her first National High School Finals Rodeo. Sheridan was the 2020 North Dakota Junior High School Rodeo Girls Breakaway Champion. In 2021, she and her partner, Coden Eastis, were the reserve champions in ribbon roping. She qualified for junior high nationals from 2019 to 2021. Sheridan competes during the summer at amateur rodeos and is a member of the North Dakota High School Rodeo Association, NDRA Rough Rider Rodeo Association, and the MHA Rodeo Association. When not rodeoing, Sheridan plays on the girls varsity volleyball and basketball team for the Center Stanton Lady Wildcats. Sheridan is also active in the FFA and one act play. The Booble family would like to thank longtime family friend Cowboy Dave Berger for nominating Sheridan Booble of Center North Dakota as this week's Dakota Cowboy Student Rodeo Athlete of the Week. That is one mighty hardworking cowgirl, and her hard work is really paying off for her. The Dakota Cowboy Student Rodeo Athlete of the Week this week, Sheridan Booble. If you have somebody that you would like to nominate as the Dakota Cowboy Student Rodeo Athlete of the Week, send an email to dakotacowboy at becknews.com. I'm Wild Bill. This is Dakota Cowboy presented by Dakota Community Bank and Trust. And we'll be back in just one moment. Hey, we're looking for ideas for our next commercial. Thoughts? We have a fully stocked lot. Cars, trucks, SUVs? Clearly. We strive for honesty, transparency, and a better buying experience. Of course we do. Guys, think everybody's busy. Nobody has time to spend hours shopping for a car has to be simple, easy. Sales, service, simplify. Perfect. Torgerson Auto Center, East Bismarck Expressway. Sales, service, simplified. Unique gifts, an assortment of beautiful jewelry, and much more can be found at Dakota Territory Jewelry and Gifts in Medora. Montana silver necklaces and earrings, Black Hills gold and sterling silver jewelry, many Native American made pieces too, and a selection of art pieces. They carry healthy products made right here in North Dakota, and to satisfy your sweet tooth, Fall in love with the best fudge around and the freshest taffy made right in the store. Buy it by the pound in a variety of flavors. Dakota Territory, jewelry and gifts in historic Medora. Wild Bill here for Stephenson Selinger Chiropractic of Dickinson. Recently, I tore my meniscus, and after an MRI, doctors gave me three options. Prescription meds, reoccurring injections, or surgery, which wasn't guaranteed to rid me of the pain. Then someone suggested I try soft wave therapy. Stephenson Selinger Chiropractic of Dickinson are skilled in this innovative treatment. After a few treatments, my pain went from an 8 down to a 1. See if soft wave therapy is right for you. Contact Stephenson Selinger Chiropractic today. I'd like to personally invite you to Sentinel Butte the first Saturday in August for the annual Home on the Range Champions Ride. The best bronc riders are matched with the toughest broncs in this PRCA-sanctioned, mission-minded event. Come support the kids at Home on the Range. Be part of the tradition at North Dakota's longest-running saddle bronc event. It's the annual Champions Ride Saddle Bronc Match, the first Saturday in August at the Open A Angus Arena in Sentinel Butte. 
Get your tickets at hotrnd.com. Medora Boot and Western Wear open year-round in historic Medora. You'll find quality items for cowboys and cowgirls of all ages. Medora Boot and Western Wear has over 1,500 pair of boots on hand at all times. New this year, the R. Watson brand of boot, featuring an all-leather heel, riveted shank, and a 10-iron leather sole. Jeans, shirts, hats, caps, and more, and customer service is number one. Medora Boot and Western Wear in historic Medora. Medora Boot and Western Wear. The 5th Annual Ranch-O-Rama Rodeo Days comes to Historic Medora August 11th and 12th. Main perps are at 6 p.m. both days with slack at 9 a.m. This NDRA-sanctioned rodeo will feature all your favorite events like bareback riding, breakaway roping, bull riding, and more. And as a special event, women's ranch bronc riding. This is a Kling Rodeo LLC signature event. Concessions and beer garden will be on site. No outside beverages allowed. The 5th Annual Ranch-O-Rama Rodeo Days, August 11th and 12th in Medora, produced by the Ranch-O-Rama Arena Club. Hey y'all, it's Trent on the loose. I'm a sixth generation farmer, husband, patriot, father. And as much as I'd love to just sit here under this shade tree and celebrate my own place on my front porch, truth of the matter is that people don't know who, where, and how is producing their food. So travel the country with Trent on the loose and we'll find those interesting human interest stories behind the people that bring us the efficient food supply. Trent on the loose. There were these four former United States presidents and six North Dakota cowboys, and they were at the preferred pearly gates of heaven. And St. Peter said, what can I do for you boys? And the four U.S. presidents said, we would like to spend eternity in South Dakota. And the six North Dakota cowboys said, and we want to spend eternal life in North Dakota, at which St. Peter said, done. And now those six North Dakota Cowboys reside at the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame, and I'll be darned if they didn't bring one of those presidents with them. <laughs> And we're back one more time on Dakota Cowboy, presented by Dakota Community Bank and Trust. Ironically, we are going to be at Mount Rushmore. Coming up on the 20th of July, two shows, 3 and 5 p.m., called America's Story, presented by my good friend, the great storyteller, Jeff Gould. I'll be the master of ceremonies, and we'll have highlights of that presentation here on Dakota Cowboy, and we're going to tie it in with an event coming up in October in Valley City for the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame. So, a lot to ponder until we meet again at the end of August. I'm Wild Bill. This is Dakota Cowboy, presented by Dakota Community Bank and Trust. We'll see you in the future. If not in the pasture, adios. We are rewriting Hollywood script for our kids. I'm pop culture expert Tina Griffin, and as a former Hollywood actress, I'm giving you a behind the scenes look at how today's entertainment is eroding the foundational development of America's youth and how to safely navigate this pop culture chaos. Knowledge is power. Parents want solutions. It's time to get the power back in your hands and reclaim the right to decide who and what should influence your kids. Weekdays at 2 p.m. Central Time on Beck TV. Now you can have the personalized forecast at your fingertips when you need it. Beck's exclusive weather insight is information tailored to you. Radar, weather alerts, forecasts, and videos. Download the free Weather on Beck News app. Search your app store now. Hey, y'all, it's Trent on the loose. I'm a sixth generation farmer, husband, patriot, father. And as much as I'd love to just sit here under this shade tree and celebrate my own place on my front porch, truth of the matter is that people don't know who, where, and how is producing their food. So travel the country with Trent on the loose, and we'll find those interesting human interest stories behind the people that bring us the efficient food supply. Trent on the loose. We're the ladies of another view. Join us at 9 a.m. weekday mornings. We'll discuss issues you care about from local and national perspectives. Weekdays at 9 a.m. on Beck TV and online at beck.news.